Hello, and welcome to Medell Spotlight. In these short and informative webinars, we feature leading hearing healthcare professionals from across the country to discuss available treatment options and provide insights into the field of hearing implants and intact skin solutions for all Medell product lines. In this particular series, we are diving into everything Otoplan, from pre-op electrode selection to post-op mapping of the frequency to electrode location. Welcome to the Medell Otoplan Spotlight Series. My name is Jack Roulette and I'm an engineer at Medell. Joining me today, I have Dr. Scott Brown, a neurotologist from the Atlanta Institute for ENT. Thank you for taking the time to join us today, Dr. Brown. Before we get started, would you mind sharing a little bit about your professional background? Yeah, Jack, I'd be happy to. Thanks for having me here today and thanks to Medell for, for putting on this, uh, this series. So I've, I've been at the Atlanta Institute for ENT for about a year and a half now. Uh, I came to the area after finishing my neurotology fellowship at the University of Miami. Uh, and before that, I was at Duke University for my head and neck uh, surgery residency. Uh, I had done my medical school at Tennessee prior to that. So it's been nice to kind of bounce around the southeast and finally land up in a, a good place here in Atlanta. Yeah, definitely. Thanks for giving us a little background on yourself. As you know, our flex electrode arrays vary from 20 millimeters all the way up to 31 millimeters to address our patient's cochlear variability. In order to confidently select the most appropriate electrode, Medell developed Otoplan, a revolutionary software that utilizes CT and MRI scans to enable the surgeon to best select the electrode va variant based on the patient's cochlear duct length. In this Medell Spotlight series, we will be taking a deeper dive into Otoplan and all the capabilities this tool brings to the industry, including personalization and individualization to cochlear implants. As an expert, Dr. Brown, would you like to walk me through Otoplan and how you utilize this revolutionary tool? Yeah, Jack, I'd be happy to. Uh, so I'm going to share my screen here so we can pull up a, a case that I've, I've set up for us this morning, if you'd like. Sounds good to me. So uh, this is after I've already selected the patient in the case. Um, the opening screen allows you to select between previous cases uh, and then your data management. So my data management uh, list was already there and this is a, a case that I've selected from that. And this is uh, a patient who uh, we did uh, an actual case on previously and this is how I sort of prepared for that. Um, I, I found that there's sort of a twofold benefit in utilizing the Otoplan, as you mentioned already, to be able to customize the electrode selection for patients, I think is really important. Um, when we talk about this complete cochlear coverage, you wanna make sure that you're using the appropriate length electrode based off of that patient's individual anatomy. And then on the other hand, uh, I think that just by personally doing this, uh, going through the patient's anatomy and everything else just prepares me better uh, intraoperatively to know what I'm getting into and what to expect. Um, so you can see on our screen here that we have three separate views or really four with a combination uh, here in the bottom right of our axial coronal and sagittal views of a patient's non-contrast high resolution CT scan of the temporal bone. Uh, we're going to focus in on the right side. So I'm selecting that here and we're going to define our cochlear parameters and defining these parameters is what ultimately is going to allow the software's uh, formula to calculate cochlear duct length and everything else that we can perform our electrode selection. So this allows us to have our cochlear view. One of the things that I like to do is to sort of center my points initially on the cochlea and then zoom in really well so that I'm able to, to get a good accurate assessment. So I like to kind of center that up, get a good zoom in. You know, if there's any issues with windowing, that's something that can be selected here and ultimately adjusted. I do like to have this in sort of a nice bone window. I feel like that just gives me a good assessment there. So um, once we kind of have all of these areas centered, uh, there is a nice little reference sheet for you to go back to here in terms of what we're looking to define within these cochlear parameters. So in the axial view, this is ultimately what we're looking to define in the coronal view here and in the sagittal view here. And it's just allowing us to get these dimensions of the cochlea to allow, uh, again, the software to, to calculate everything. So let me just close this here and we'll go back to that. So um, we're going to define this. Uh, I always like to kind of start in the uh, coronal view, or excuse me, in the axial views. And when I'm scrolling through here, we're essentially orienting this red line to be along the basal turn of the cochlea here. And each kind of time that I do this, it, it requires a little bit of an adjustment. So I sort of go between initially again, defining that red line along the basal turn that may require a little bit of adjusting in terms of the angle of that. Um, and as I do this, you'll, we kind of see that, that 
each one of these sections will start to, to mirror that. And it's always, you can always, again, go back to the cochlear view to, to see that as a reference. Um, so once I've sort of established that basal term, the next thing that I'll do is uh, go to this, the, the, the coronal view to define our round window point um, over to our medial wall here. And again, we're keeping kind of the medialis centered here on the red dot. Um, and the center of each of these. So once we've defined our, our cochlear viewpoints, which again, we've, we've cross-referenced back with that initial sheet, we'll, we'll click done here. And then this allows us to actually go into those specifics. So uh, the first thing that we're doing is defining this round window point. So we have two views in which we can do that. Again, the red dot here going to select where the round window is. You can see that this correlates well on the other view. I might make occasional adjustments depending on one versus the other, but in general, um, I think that's a good point. Um, again, now we're going to define our lateral wall point. So taking that over and again, confirming that this view and this view um, uh, agree with one another. The next we're going to do is define our width. So we find our inferior point here and finding that dot that's there. And then again here, and I might even make a little bit of an adjustment down there, seeing, seeing some of that, uh, that gray still being there. And then adding our superior point, I think this is a nice view because this is actually a good demonstration of just how close that labyrinthine segment of the facial nerve comes to the cochlea. So we'll add that superior point and then define the height of the cochlea. And so that point will be there corresponding nicely. And then our apical center here, again, corresponding nicely there. So once we've done that, we kind of go back, confirm, make sure all those points look good and then check everything here. And now all of our cochlear parameters are defined. So after we've defined all of our cochlear parameters, I can go in now uh, into this individualization uh, specifically for electrode visualization. So that's what we're gonna go into here. Um, and once we've done this, it's basically taken those cochlear parameters and sort of mapped out uh, the cochlear duct length, our diameter and our width and our height. And it, it now allows you the opportunity to go through and visualize some of these electrodes. And again, this comes back to the importance of being able to individualize this, right? Because if I just sort of looked at this cochlea and eyeballed it and said, all right, well, yeah, we'll choose a flex 28 for this. You can see that this flex 28 is really, even with a round window insertion here, is only gonna go to about you know 540 degrees here. And so we're actually missing some of this coverage here at our lower apical frequencies. But by selecting a flex soft, again, you can see that this actually now gets a greater uh, coverage of our cochlea and some of those lower frequencies, again, still with uh, an expected uh, round window insertion. Um, and this can be altered. We can see what would happen if you had a little bit of an over insertion or say if you, you felt like you know, intraoperatively you had an electro that was maybe out. Um, again, it still gives you a sense of just how much uh, cochlear coverage you're ultimately getting. Yeah, and this is a great tool preoperatively. And one analogy I always like to use is everyone has different size feet. So you have different size shoes in order to properly utilize that sort of stuff. So it's the same with cochleas. Everyone has different size cochleas. There's large cochleas, small cochleas. And we at Medell have de developed a wide variety of uh, electrode arrays to address this issue. And in your clinic's experience, what uh, cochlear duct lengths have you seen? We can see here, this one's about... 35.26 millimeters uh, at the round window level. But I'm just curious what you've seen in your clinical practice. So we've had a pretty you know, wide bit of variability. And I'll tell you that uh, you know, I've been putting in a lot of CT scans, even outside of specifically for cochlear implant surgery, just to gather some of this data now that we've had this software available. Um, and it, I'll tell you, it has ranged anywhere from you know, as small as 28 millimeters to as long as you know, 38 to 39. In general, I'm finding cochlear duct links are averaging somewhere between about 31 and 32 millimeters. Thank you for that. So prior to us having FDA approval for Otoplan last year, how are you selecting metal variant electrodes? Um, really, it I, I, I kind of goes down to what we were talking about before. Some of it was just a little bit of an eyeball test, honestly. Um, it was sort of just looking at it and, and basing off of just a general sense, I would sometimes just do a single measurement of sort of cochlear height, you know, what we were talking about there and that, that sagittal view of, of just getting a sense of how tall it was. And you know, I didn't have really a strict cutoff. I, I have done some uh, measurement studies with Simon and Jelly at University of Miami in terms of cochlear height and whether or not full insertion was able to be achieved. And in general, this sort of cutoff of 4.5 to uh, you know, five millimeter height. Um, but you can see here that, you know, again, height is, doesn't, doesn't tell the whole story, right? This is a height of only 3.6, but when you account for your diameter and width, that certainly uh, affects our cochlear duct length here. 
Is it safe to assume Otoplan has given you more confidence when selecting electrode arrays preoperatively? And then when yeah. you go into the OR, you're able to achieve uh, full insertions based on the analysis from Otoplan? Yeah, ab absolutely. Uh, and you know, for a specific example, just yesterday we were doing a pediatric case for single-sided deafness. Um, we're able to use Otoplan preoperatively to select a, a Flex 28 um, and very confidently achieve full insertion, right? And sometimes, even though we talk about the inner ear being fully formed in, in, in kids, I think there's still sometimes this general sense that, well, maybe you can't get these longer electrodes in, in younger patients. And while uh, you know, with experience, we know that that's not always the case. This again, just allows you to have that extra confidence that uh, the electrode you're choosing is gonna, gonna be able to be, you know, done exactly how you expect it to. That's great to hear. Um, what impact do you think Otoplan will have on clinical care moving forward, in particular the cochlear implant industry? So for spe specifically for the cochlear implant industry, I think you know, to the point that you and I were just discussing, which is you know, appropriate selections of electrodes, right? Um, I mean, one example could be that, that if I, I was somebody who really strongly felt that I wanted to get a flex off in all my patients, but I you know, input everything into Otoplan and saw that with a round window insertion, I would have two electrodes out of the round window with something like that, then even though ideally we want some of these longer length electrodes, that would sort of allow me to uh, maybe alter my kind of perception of that and choose a shorter electrode based off of that individual anatomy. I know one of the upcoming webinars is going to be based on anatomy based fitting. So I don't want to go too much into that, but, uh, in our clinic here, we've had some excellent, uh, experience with that. And I'm excited to, to hear about, uh, that in the upcoming webinar as well. Yeah, definitely. And that's another aspect of Otoplan. And one way I like to look at it preoperatively, um, you're baking a cake and it's really essential when you're baking the cake to select that most appropriate electrode for that patient. And that's 80% of, you know, making the best clinical outcomes is assigning the most appropriate electrode uh, for them based on their cochlear duct length. And anatomy-based fitting is really just the icing on the cake. So 80% of achieving, you know, optimal outcomes through this sort of individualization and personalization is the preoperative portion that Dr. Brown just walked through with us. Yeah, I, I agree, Jack. I think it's it's a matter of uh, the, the sort of double benefit of electrode selection and then also just familiarity with the patient, right? You know, when we look through these scans, oftentimes as a pre-op scan, you might just give a cursory look to make sure the mastoid is well aerated and maybe look at where the facial nerve course is and everything else. But I think by taking the time to map out some of these cochlear parameters, it also just familiarizes yourself with the patient a little bit better. Yeah, definitely. And currently we've been promoting Otoplan for electrode selection and anatomy based fitting, but how do you envision a tool like this being utilized for further applications in the future? Uh, it's cochlear implant, bone conductions, anything you'd like to speak on? Sure. I, I think we've hit a lot of the major points specifically for cochlear implant surgery. Um, you know, as, as you mentioned, uh, I think it extends beyond that, right? With, uh, with some of the upcoming software updates that are going to allow us specifically to show where the bone bridge uh, depth gauge, right? Being able to map that out so that, you know, if you have a difficult case, whether you're going above the temporal line or behind the sigmoid, making sure that that cortical bone is thick enough or, you know, anticipating whether or not you're going to need to use lifts in a case like that, I think is, is really nice. Um, I will tell you, I have extended some of the use of this to several of my skull based cases as well. You know, oftentimes it can be a little bit difficult when you're talking about either a, a spinal fluid leak case or an encephalocele case to know just exactly the size or location of your defect. And with some of the three dimensional um, uh, sort of mapping that we're able to do, I, I had a great case where I was able to map out specifically where the encephalocele defect was. And it just gives you a significantly you know, greater amount of confidence going into surgery to, 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 know, to know what you're getting into. Yeah, definitely. Being able to three reconstruct the patient's individual anatomy based on their CTs or MRI gives you a great advantage uh, preoperatively when you're walking into the OR, you know what to expect and know what you're going to run into. Do you think a tool like this could have um, helped you uh, increase your uh, level of understanding of anatomy uh, for patients when you were learning throughout fellowship and residency? Oh, I, absolutely. I mean, this is this is a nuanced way of, of looking at the cochlea, right? Um, these are not views that that you're really typically going to see when you're looking at scans, right? Uh, even though things can be reformatted all sorts of ways. Again, when you're sort of first learning these types of things, you're really focusing on things like your axial and coronal views. And so I think as you make some of these adjustments when looking at the cochlear parameters, it's giving you a, a much 
different three-dimensional sort of understanding of that. And I think, you know, again, going back to not only understanding the anatomy, but also understanding some of these concepts that we try to teach, like insertion angle during surgery, um, you know, round window niche exposure, you know, you see that bony overhang and getting kind of a sense of the variable depths and variable sizes of that bony overhang, I think just allows you to better prepare for uh, round window exposure um, during surgery as well. Yeah, definitely. And I think that about wraps up our spotlight series with Dr. Brown. Thank you very much for all your insight and showing the preoperative portion of Otoplan. I really think that's the big, most important uh, portion, making sure the patient has the right electrode selection. And, um, you know, preoperatively, it's very important for us at Medell. So thank you very much, Dr. Brown. And next time we're going to dig a little deeper into Otoplan On Demand. It's a new service that we will be providing the electrode uh, portfolio for you based on the patient's cochlear duct length. So what Dr. Brown did today, he was doing it himself, but Medell has offered a new service called Otoplan On Demand, which we will do what you saw today for you, and you can select the most appropriate electrode for your patient. So thank you very much for joining us, Dr. Brown. Uh, it's much appreciated. Thanks, Jack, and thanks to Medell for having me. I really appreciate it.